my name is Lily Mai and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Uh, I am just going to continue where I left off, obviously. Um, so let's go. I am sorry about my slow computer. Um, it's trying its best, but it's not uh, not cut out for this sort of work. Anyway, let's continue. I did not do this for you. I'm only here because the king ordered me to go with you. I just want us to be closer, Lucette. I would like us to try... I would like to try to be your friend. I do not want or need your friendship. I'm sorry, she's such a sweet girl and I'm so mean to her. No matter how you act around me, we are not, and will never be, sisters. I'd take care to remember that if I were you. She's so cold. I'm sorry, Emmeline. But I... Rod suddenly grabs my hand, pulling me away from Emmeline. Stop. He is staring daggers at me. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him angry. And of course he loves his sister. This is really sweet. Rod, don't. Let me go. Both of you ought to stay away from me. I feel the heavy atmosphere as I turn to look at the people staring at us. Their expressions mirror the looks of disdain I saw years ago. Anger, disgust, hatred. I begin to walk away. Princess, wait! Don't follow me. Princess. And there she goes. I just... My cloak. I just wanted to pause for one moment to say how much around. Um, I am working on creating my own visual novels, so I'm very aware of um, this sort of thing. I um, haven't had the opportunity to create my own backgrounds yet because, um, well, reasons. Anyway, let's continue. I should never have left the palace. As I walk around, I watch the people bumbling down the streets. So carefree. They work so hard for so little reward. They could work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I They could work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I have. And yet, they are happy. And I... I heard Anise lost a job at the palace. It's true, the Crown Princess Lucette made sure that poor girl was fired. I stop in my tracks at the mention of my name. Not again. Anise? Was that the name of that one maid that tore Dolores' dress? If so, my decision to fire her was justified. A palace maid cannot be clumsy. Why should I tolerate poor performance? What did I do that was so wrong? I know that Anise... I know that Anise, hardworking and, and big-hearted, very good with medicine. Shame she lost her job so quickly. You know how hard the Crown Princess is to please. My friend at the palace says she doesn't even smile, only goes around with that cold look on her face. That's probably why they call her Ice Princess. What? Ice Princess? So, all those times I heard the servants saying that, I'd always suspected they were talking about me. She's the complete opposite of our Princess Emmeline. That child's an angel. We should all kn we all know she should be Crown Princess. Annoyance begins to simmer inside me. I cannot stand hearing any more, so I walk away. 
Ever since Emmeline entered my life, I'm always being compared to her. And now I have become second best. I am Lucette Riella Britton. Brighton. Daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III and the Crown Princess of the Kingdom of Angio. I am of royal blood. She is... She is nothing. There you are. Princess, you must come back with me. It's getting too late for you to remain outside. Princess? Are you alright? Are you hurt? I brush him off and turn away. No need to fuss. Let us return to the palace. <clears throat> Leaving the palace was physically and mentally draining. My bed is welcoming to my unusually heavy body. I turn my head and meet Dolores' glassy gaze from where she sits on my shelf. Such a pretty doll. I love the purple of her dress. It's so nice. I left the palace today, Dolores. But I left the palace today, Dolores. It was the same as all those years ago. Everyone looked at me like I was... What have I ever done to deserve those looks? It's really sad because from her perspective, she hasn't done anything. She's just so sheltered and... I suppose you could say tunnel visioned. That's why I like the story because... Um, because of what happens, she becomes a better person and she sees her faults. It's sort of like a lesson for us all. Some days we do need to take a good look at ourselves. Anyway. Sorry, I, <laughs> I do like to go on tangents sometimes. You've probably noticed. How can I be... <laughs> Sorry. How can I be so hated? Ice Princess. I wish Mother was here. I look at the smiling faces of my dolls. At least I still have all of you. I yawn and stretch my arms. Good night, Dolora. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Singing? But who? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I blink my eyes open, only to see Dolora sitting in front of me on my bed. Moonlight spills across her delicate features. How I wonder what you are. Wasn't she on the shelf with all of the other dolls when I went to bed? You did. Laura? It's almost time. I pinch my cheeks to make sure I'm not dreaming. It hurts. Only ten minutes before the clock strikes twelve. Oh, there she is! I hope you're ready, Princess. What? My doll just turned into a human. How? Who are you? You know who I am. I've been watching you since the day your father gave me to you. What is happening? I don't think I've ever been so confused in my life. All the answers will come with time. But right now, I'm here to give you something, Princess. And you're not going to like it. I love her expression. Is this... Cinderella's very own glass slipper? It is beautiful. Too beautiful. Then a realisation begins to dawn upon me. You're a witch. Smart girl. I knew you'd figure it out eventually. Now it's time to say goodbye to your precious crown. What? Sweet dreams.
Cinderella. And there you have it. That is the uh, introduction. Hey, wake up, girl. Uh huh? And we are back in the town. Where am I? Ow, my head. You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. Leave before a customer sees you. I was in my room. How am I here? Did you not hear what I said? You filthy child. Filthy? You would speak to your crown princess in such a manner. If you're the crown princess, then I'm the queen. You must have been knocked on the head quite hard to have such grand delusions. I am not delusional. I'm Lucette Biela Brighton, blood daughter of King Genero Brighton III, and the Crown Princess of Angio. Right, the king never had a daughter without witch. Is she referring to mother? Witch? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her puzzled. Our good king only has stepchildren, Princess Emmeline and Prince Rod. And you most definitely and you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you but <laughs> Now get gone before you go spouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and scare them away. With a huff, she leaves me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. I quickly realise that I am wearing tattered clothes, and that I do not even have shoes on. The shock of it all. No, no, no! This cannot be happening! Something shines against my chest, and I reach to grab it. There it is! <laughs> this is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch. Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must return to the palace to speak with the king. Oh, <laughs> good luck with that. Let me in. Sorry, girl, but this palace is off limits to uninvited guests. You do not understand. I'm Crown Princess Lucette Riella Brighton. I must speak with my father. As loath as I'm called, as loath as I am to call him that, I have to. No one will believe me if I'm addressing him by title. You must leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only make way for the king. The gates swing open and three horses trot out. Soldiers ride two of the horses, while the last horse has a different, familiar rider. Father! I immediately move to block the path of his horse. The soldiers move to hold me back. Your Majesty! What is this? Your Majesty, this girl is claiming to be your daughter. Daughter? Both of my ste both of my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even father is a part of this? Father, you must help me. Visible confusion. A witch has cursed me. Once in your life, just once, help me. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looked at me with pity in his eyes. He is looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was the crown princess. And his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. This should feed you and your family for a day or two. The kingdom offers work opportunities to those who need them. Please let your parents know. 
I do not want your pity, Father. Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, Your Majesty. I watch as my father and his two guards ride away on their horses, leaving me to stand in their dust. He left me alone. Again. Where is your home, girl? There is nowhere left for me to go. My father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here. Our orders were to leave me alone. Suit yourself. Can't say we didn't try. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. I watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stare at the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I have just been unceremoniously paraded away from my home like I'm, like I'm nothing more than a piece of garbage. Or the fact that my own father does not recognize me. Oh! Look at that girl's hideous dress. How difficult it is to be poor. I clutch at the pouch, closer to my chest. I clutch the pouch closer to my chest as I run to an empty alley. I huddle in a corner, trying to become as small as possible. I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. Of course, that isn't going to happen. A dream? No matter what happens, you must not leave this palace. Why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. But they are always so nice to me. That is only because you are the crown princess. They will only ever think of what they can take from you. I am trying to protect you, my love. This is why you must never leave the palace. Never leave mother. I'm the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Chapter 1 uh, The Marchant? Sorry, I didn't read that properly. And we are back to where the um, story began, or the uh, visual novel began. Um, when I open my eyes, I'm still on the streets. I must have fallen asleep, somehow. But the nightmare continues. I'm cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, winning some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb and in pain, caked in the dirt that I've gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, there's a frightful sight. Beggars probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Ah, just look at how ragged, it, ragged she looks. What are you looking at? At two women with the... the two women that lack the basic manners of a noble upbringing. Silence, girl. Do you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. What nerve? Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to a commoner's level. I will remember you, and once I break this curse, I will make you regret your words. I became acutely aware of the fact that I had not eaten anything for almost a day. I've been sitting here, thinking on the new mess that is my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first. But how? I have no idea where she is. Dolora. I swear I will make you regret doing this to me. When I find you, I... I will find food first. 
Is this all the king thinks I'm worth? Ever so ungrateful. <laughs> Leave, girl. <clears throat> Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoo! There's nothing for you here. He just swatted me away like a fly. The nerve! Sensing, sensing that this will get me nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try. I am treated as something less than dirt, like my money has no real value. I am the Crown Princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I have been eating stale bread, anything to keep the hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a small bakery. There are croissants on display that make my mouth water. Slowly, I begin to make my way over there. Ow! Ow! My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coin for a pair of shoes. But food is more important. If the rags I am wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I need to prioritise. And that's your first lesson. And I will die before I beg. Two croissants. You'll need to pay, girl. There are no free handouts here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. There should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants in a paper bag. I will not ask where you got those coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? Now be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away other customers. Gosh, the uh, customers of this town must really be scaredy cats. <laughs> Without another word, I turn and start to walk away from the woman. So, this is the goodness of the people of Angeal. I take a bite out of one of the croissants, cringing a little at the dryness. Hey girl! What now? We saw you at the shop. Want to share how you got your coin there? Who didn't see this coming? <laughs> Excuse me. Look at her, brushing us off like she's royalty or something. Let me go. You ain't no better than us. Now, be a good girl and hand over that pouch. The man on my left grabs at my pouch and attempts to yank it away from me. I will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach, then aim a kick at the other man's shin. Well, at least she's a fighter. I have an opening. I take it. What? I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Hey! Where do I go? I'm not familiar with the streets at all. It is highly likely I'm just going to hit a dead end. Where should I go? Oh, choices, choices. Um, one second, let me think about this. Okay, I thought about it, and I will go right. Ooh, a mysterious character. I wonder who this could be. Hey, this way. Ooh, it's what? I love his glove so much. I'm sure I said that before. You know, no time to talk, Princess. How do you know who I am? There's another one. Stop running, you two. Come on. The boy grabs my wrist and pulls me after him. He takes off with a sudden burst of speed, and then I'm running even faster than I just was. I'm not entirely convinced following him is a good idea, but at least the boy seems to have a better sense of direction than me. Oh! Our running causes rocks in the pathway to come loose, and before I notice them in my path, I step down hard on them. A sharp pain shoots into my foot, and I collapse to the ground. 
It hurts. Princess. I try to stand. The pain in my feet is unbearable. I fall back down into the dirt with a gasp. I can't. But we've got you now. Just hand over your coins and neither of you will get hurt. Oh, he's so handsome. <laughs> I won't let you touch her. Ha! <laughs> says the little boy. Well, well, well. And here's my favourite character. <laughs> what is this ghastly sight before me? Oh, he's so dreamy. <laughs> Two adults threatening a child and a lady. How very ungentlemanly. What are the likes of you even doing around this neighbourhood? You asking to get fleeced? Asking? Perhaps I am in the mood for a scuffle. Oh, I love this so much. <laughs> the nobleman brandishes his sword, the expression confident, maybe even cocky. Show me what you've got, sirs. And please, don't bore me. Who are these people? I ain't dealing with this for the money. He's got a sword. What? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. Such a badass. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. You're late. Sorry, kid. I know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Hmm. Oh, you know how hard it is for me to be invisible. <sighs> you know how hard it is for me to be invisible around here. Wait, what did you just call me? At ease, small one. These two know each other? I... I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head is pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach rumbles, the hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Uh, uh, hey, Princess. Princess! Calm down. Parfait will be able to help her. But for now, we need to move before anyone else sees us. Yeah. Don't worry, you're safe now. Everything is fading. Oh, so mysterious. A dream? Ooh. A dream? What is that in your hands, Lucette? I. It was hers. I just wanted to help it, but... but it died. It's all my fault. It is not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. But... This is the world, Lisette. Only the strong survive. The weak get cast aside to die. Such a cruel world. <laughs> you are not weak. You are strong. My crown princess, you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I don't want to see you cry again. Do you understand? Y yes Now get rid of that thing and wash your hands. Did you not hear me, child? Yes, mother. And I think that is a good place to stop. Um, there is so much more wonderful things to come. Um, but I hope you enjoy Excuse you <laughs> Sorry, that was uh my dog yawning. Um now what was I saying? You interrupted my train of thought. <laughs> um Yes, I hope you enjoyed this playthrough and and yeah I hope you enjoyed this playthrough and I will be uploading the next one soon enough. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and remember to take time to tell someone special that you love them. Bye bye now!